Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Dr. Katie Nall about stress triggers and emotional freedom technique. Katie Nall, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be a fun conversation. You really have an interesting background. I'll share that with listeners here in just a moment. Um, But because of your background, we're going to have a really fun conversation. Uh, And perhaps I'll even get out of my comfort zone a little bit here in a moment. Um, We're going to be talking about stress triggers and emotional freedom technique. Uh, You'll walk us through those a little bit and... uh, You'll also be taking me through a little bit of a tapping session, which uh, I'm not super familiar with. So that'll be intriguing. Um, we'll we'll uh, see how that goes. Um, as we get started, I wanted to share Katie's bio with everybody. Katie Nall, PhD, is a Florida mathematician, a TEDx speaker, a professional member of National Speakers Association, and an accredited master trainer and practitioner in emotional freedom technique, also known as EFT or tapping. Dr. Nall enjoys uh, showing others how to dissolve their waffles, worries, anxiety, fear, frustration, lethargy, and exhaustion, and stress. Uh, What a wonderful acronym, by the way. Uh, (laughs) That's really great. And uh, it's just such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining me. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of background or personal context before we dive on in? Yeah, so I'm accidentally been married for 48 years and have five adorable granddaughters. <laughs> That's wonderful. Accidentally for 48 years. <laughs> we were supposed to get a divorce after two years, Jonathan. And, you know, we just got, I don't know, busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, divorce d- divorce is time consuming. <laughs> it is. It takes a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, very, very good. Well, congratulations on the long marriage and beautiful family, and that, mm-hmm. that's wonderful. Um, okay, so as we get started, I thought you could begin by just walking us through some of the common s- stress triggers, and then we can explore a little bit of, of what is a, uh, specifically emotional freedom technique is, and then we can go from there. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. So it, as it turns out, uh, stress triggers can be different for different people. Um, it has been found that there are three main reasons that trigger stress. One is uncertainty, one is lack of information, and the other one is loss of control. Don't know about you, Jonathan, but as far as I'm concerned, this past 18 months has been uncertain, lack of information, and loss of control. So a lot of people have hit their stress levels. And when we get when we get stressed, it's not just the the idea of being stressed, it's a physical way. You know, we feel it in our bodies, right? You know, we get a headache, our neck tightens, our shoulders, our shoulders go down, we may we may our chest may be tight, our heart will race, we may get butterflies in our stomach, and it actually can affect our health. When um, we have those kind of uh, incidences, it turns out that physicians say that 80% of medical visits are stress related. So being able to control our stress, and that's the one thing I want your audience to to hear today, is that you can control your stress, um, can make such a difference. Now, I um, accidentally got into this emotional freedom technique when I was researching for my dissertation. I was a mature student going back to school, getting my PhD, working on math education. And I wanted to work, Jonathan, with students who were mostly coming back to school and wanted to get through that last class. And you know what that last class was, right? (laughs) It was always math. 
It, it's and always math. My my wife is a university math professor. Same thing. Um, <laughs> it's always math. It's always math. It's always math. And I wanted to help these students. So I started asking them questions like, what was it? Why? What? I can talk about history or I can talk about English or business or anything else. And they don't like change color, you know, where, <laughs> where they start turning red or or they uh, water the plants in the office with the sweat coming off their hands, or you know, some people get physically ill. And I was like, what is it about math that is triggering all this? So I started asking questions. And what I came up with is it was basically two things. One, somebody told them that math was difficult. It isn't. Or somebody told them that they were not capable of doing math. And I know that's not true. For years, I owned a Kumon franchise to help people uh, increase their math skills. And I saw everyone from two-year-olds to adults, from uh, learning disabled to gifted, and everyone was able to learn math. So I thought, well, this is really weird. What's going on? So I started doing research on how to relieve fear and anxiety about math. And do you know what I found, Jonathan? Nothing. There's like nothing out there. I really, <laughs> what they say, and your wife can probably attest to this. What they say is you need to get a study guide. You need to study differently. Get a different teacher. You know, you need to do more. And, and I like, I couldn't get people to register for the class. They were just so overwhelmed. So I thought, hmm, this kind of sounds like a word problem. So what I'm going to do is change it. And I took away the math part and I said, how do people overcome fear and anxiety? And that's when I found emotional freedom technique. That was back in 2010 when I was listening to all 10 days of Nick Ortner's Tapping Summit. And I listened all 10 days. I bought the book. I bought the DVD. Students would come into my office here at the college where I'm an administrator and I'd say, okay, I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but let's try it. Well, one by one, they were coming back and saying, I got an A in math and that's never happened before. And I can't believe I passed my math class. I'm like, huh, I wonder if this stuff really works. I don't know who is more surprised, the students or me. <laughs> and so we started um, kind of checking this out. And I thought, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing. I, I probably should get trained. And as it turned out, Jonathan, I was right. I had no idea what I was doing and it was still working. <laughs> but I did find that in the process of, you know, trying this out, I did accidentally kind of get people into um, a painful trauma state. So tapping is very powerful and it can be used for good and it can also be misused. So I've now had training in level one, level two, level three, trauma, quantum, which is past lives. That's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, and now I'm so excited. Um, finally, after eight years of study, I'm now a master trainer and practitioner. So I train others in tapping. And one of my goals is to um, make sure every math instructor, so I might want to talk to your wife, make sure every math instructor knows how to do tapping for themselves and for their students. So would mm -hmm. you like to try it? Yeah. So, well, uh, that's super interesting. And yeah, my wife has talked to me a lot about math anxiety <laughs> and, and the origins of that. And, and like you said, there, there's a dearth of uh, good research out there on what to do about it. So very yeah. good. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's give it a whirl. Okay. So um, Jonathan, tell me something in the last 24, 48 hours that has made you frustrated or worried or given you a little bit of anxiety. You know, I was actually venting to my wife a little bit about this last night, um, but I, I just had some frustration um, at the university. Um, no ill intent uh, that anyone, you know, had, um, but it was just a general, what I perceive as a disrespect of people's time, um, you know, scheduling a last minute meeting uh, mm -hmm. that's mandatory, everyone's expected to attend, no notice, no agenda, just that you have to be there uh, and you have to then shuffle everything that, you know, is coming the next day. Right. So I was frustrated about that. And unfortunately that kind of thing happens more than it should. It really should right. never happen, but right. it, it was happening more than it should. And so I was, I was venting a bit about it and, and definitely was frustrating. My son actually came over to me um, after I'd been venting to my wife for a few minutes and he just sat down next to me, my little 10 year old. And he's like, dad, 
Did you have a hard day at work? Aww. What are you frustrated with today? <laughs> and I was like, that was so cute. <laughs> but they, they I, it must be, they must know, you know. When... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Their emotional barometer is much sharper than mine. I know that. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. So, so when you think about how frustrated um, you know, them scheduling, you know, events with no ag agenda and meetings um, from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes. Where do you feel that frustration in your body? Hmm. Interesting. Um, I, I don't know. Um, maybe in my chest. Okay. Okay. And from zero to 10, where zero is like, oh, no big deal. I know that's what they're going to do. I'm just going to roll with it. And 10 is the most frustrated you've been in your entire mm. life. Where is that, Jonathan? Oh, I, it's, it's probably like a four or five. Yeah. Just enough to be irritating, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you through the tapping spots that we're going to tap, and then we're going to add words to it. Okay. The uh, clinical research that's been done in the last 40 years around the world about tapping has shown that tapping on the spots can relieve some of the waffles. Uh, but when you add words, it's exponentially more effective. So um, I'm going to lead you through this and you can follow along. And for your listeners who are not driving, uh, they, I would encourage them to follow along as well. So Jonathan, you can use your right hand or your left hand and that area between your wrist and your little finger. I want you to take the other hand and tap right there. Yeah, okay. there you go. And I want you to think about when you got that announcement. Was it an email that you got sent? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always those emails, right? And sometimes we conveniently forget to read them. So we can't make it to that uh, <laughs> meeting, right? <laughs> and then think about that. And then what I want you to do is you can, again, you can take your right hand or your left hand and tap right on the top of your head, on the crown of your head. Or you can use both and do the monkey move. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and then I'm, gonna, I'm warning you, I'm doing a close up because uh, I want you to get to the right spot. And it's right above the edge of your eyebrow, uh, right above your nose. There you go. You got it. And tap right there and think about that, getting that email and saying, oh, not again, right? And then on the area between your uh, edge of your eye and your hairline, and again, you can use one side or the other side or both, it doesn't matter. And you tap right there. And then the next spot is where I keep all my bags, convenient so that I can travel easily, and that's under our eyes. <laughs> and you tap under there. And then the next spot is above your lip, under your nose, and you tap right there. You may find yourself doing this in these unplanned meetings anyway, just when you're feeling stressed, <laughs> right? And then under your lip, above your chin. And then I would like for you to take both hands and cross them at your wrist and kind of tap right on your collarbone. And then the last place is about four inches under your arm and just give your ribs a good, a good thump. And then I then what I do is I ask my clients to put your hands on your shoulders and then go all the way down your uh, hands and blow all your air out like a cartoon figure. So it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. 
Okay, now we're going to add words. Um, right. I'm going to ask you, Jonathan, if I ask you to repeat words and you go, you know what? That's not quite true. Or I wouldn't say it that way. I'm going to ask you to repeat it in your own words. Okay. 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 And is this a true statement right here, right now? I feel safe. Yeah, I feel safe. Okay. So everything we say has got to be true for you. So again, we're going to start in the same um, places on the side of your hand and say, even though. Even though. I remember opening that email. I remember opening that email. And boy, I felt frustrated right then. And I was very frustrated then. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Even though. Even though. I remember yesterday. I do remember yesterday. Opening up that email. Opening up the email. And I wasn't sure where that frustration was, but I think it's in my chest. And I'm not sure where that frustration was, but I think it's in my chest. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Right near, right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Even though. Even though. Oh, that frustration in my chest from seeing that email. That frustration in my chest from seeing that email. I can feel it. I can feel it. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Right, right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. And then tap on the top of your head. Oh, that frustration in my chest. That frustration in my chest. And then on the edge of your eyebrow, right above your nose, that frustration in my chest. That frustration in my chest. And then on the side of the eye, between the eye and the hairline, that frustration in my chest. That frustration in my chest. And then under the eye, that frustration in my chest. That frustration in my chest. Under the nose, that frustration in my chest. That frustration in my chest. Under the lips, that frustration in my chest. That frustration in my chest. Cross your wrist and tap on your collarbone. That frustration on my chest. That frustration on my chest. And then give your ribs a good beating. That frustration on my chest. That frustration on my chest. And then our arms up, up on your shoulders and we're going to blow it out. <gasps> So when you think about the frustration now, Jonathan, how's that feel? Oh, it feels light. It feels great. As it turns out, as we peel back the stress, as we, as we dissolve our waffles, we are able to have clearer thinking. We can make better decisions. We uh, are actually healthier. Um, and relieving that stress is something that can be done easily with tapping. Clinical studies have shown that working between cognitive behavior therapy or talk therapy, EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization uh, reprogramming, and tapping, EFT, they found that among the three of them, that EMDR and EFT are way more effective. Um, that is that once you clear something out and all the aspects of it, it does not return. With EMDR, you have to be sitting with a trained therapist because you may it may go into a trauma response. But with tapping, you can actually hire a mathematician to help you. <laughs> and once you know it, you can use it yourself. So people can see me driving around town sometimes with one hand. And when that jerk pulls out in front of me, I can tap away all that anger and frustration and <laughs> rage that I have that somebody had the audacity to pull out in front of me. Um, so you can use it anywhere. Well, it's, it's, so it's really interesting. So this is my first exposure to this. Um, you know, I, ha I don't, I haven't read any of the studies. I haven't done it before. I can say genuinely that I feel like lighter. Um, I, I feel just uh, better, um, at, you know, right now after having gone through that. And, you know, I, I have suspicions about what some of the mechanisms might be, you know, from a uh, psychological standpoint from a physiological standpoint and just the the mindfulness practice of the tapping um the the kind of the breathing and the words and like all of that together just seems to to uh provide some release and and i you know i, I think that's wonderful and so what a what a fun opportunity to have that experience i really appreciate it and and a good um, as you described and walked me through that listeners can, you know, think about that and see how that applies to them and whether or not anyone listening is like, ah, tapping, I, I don't really care about that. Okay. Whatever. Um, I think ultimately it, it's a good reminder that we all have our stressors. We all have our triggers. 
Um, and we have to be able to cope with them. And we either choose healthy coping strategies or we choose negative coping strategies. And by default, I think a lot of us end up with negative coping strategies um, that can really drag us down further. We all have stuff. We all have difficult things we have to face in life. We all have difficult things at work or at home or, or both. Um, and it's, you know, hopefully over time we can learn to practice self-care and we can learn to, um, to cope in healthy ways with those stress um, source, those sources of our personal stress. And then we can find techniques that help us to get more centered, that help us to find that release. Um, and, and just the mindfulness practices, the breathing, all, all of those sorts of things can make a really big, quick impact um, yes. on, on you and, and, and set you on the right track for the day. So thank you, uh, Kate. Katie, for walking me through that. Um, are, are there any other uh, elements of that, that that you think would be worth um, highlighting or, or describing for listeners? So the training actually includes a lot of different, what, what we just went through is called the basic recipe. Um, I've had clients in the last 11 years where um, we've worked with deep-seated uh, emotions. And I read something the other day, Jonathan, that just Oh, I just, I had this huge aha moment, you know, um, when we are quite young and not, you know, we don't have a lot of cognitive skills, but we're learning things and we do something that we may put ourselves in danger or somebody else in danger and our, and our parents are trying to keep us safe. Right. And so they may have yelled at us or they may have, have said something or tried to correct us. And so we may have like, this frustration that we start off with, with frustration that we can't do something, but then it may be layered with um, disappointment that we've disappointed people we love, or it may be la layered with fear because some, for some caregivers, you know, there could be fear, or it could be layered with who knows however many different kinds of negative emotions. And so when we get triggered by uncertainty, lack of information or loss of control, we may not recognize that it's back when we were two or three or seven or whenever that something happened and we have all these other negative emotions coded on top of it. And that's, it's layering them off because the word emotion, you know, is a, a combination of energy and motion. And when we have a response to something and we all have different responses to different things, as we have a response to something that response should we should have that emotion and then it should continue on i mean we've all had joy we've all had happiness we've all been delighted at something but we don't stay that way but when we have negative emotions somehow they get stuck and i believe they get stuck because they got layered with other negative emotions yeah. and i was the queen of positivity before all of this and when i sat my husband down and said okay we're going to try something new and I turned to him and I said, okay, tell me what you're feeling negative about today, which I could have said it because, you know, we've been together for so long. And he kind of gave me a side eye and he said, is this a trick? Because, you know, for decades, you've been telling me to be positive. I'm like, no, 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 no. Positivity hasn't been working. We've got to try this now. <laughs> well, he was hesitant to try, but um, we still got through it. And then I realized that, you know, being positive all the time is great. But that just means that the negative emotions are stuck in us and it's releasing and acknowledging those negative emotions so that that energy can move through us and that we can then have joy and delight yeah. and love and all of those other emotions. Well, I, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Katie, so much. It, is, it has been a real uh, pleasure talking with you and learning a little bit more about this technique and just thinking more about stress and, and coping strategies. Uh, before we close today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, and then give us the final word on the topic. So um, uh, I have a TEDx talk that's in, the, in my YouTube channel. Um, they can reach me through my website, which is uh, Play on Words. My last name is Noll, N-A-L-L, -L, followed by the word edge, E-D-G-E-C-O.com. So it's knowledgecompany.com. Uh, they can email me at hello at drnoll.com. Or I'll even challenge your listeners that they can call me directly. And I'd love to talk to them. I'm at area code 772-226-0167. And I would love to hear from your listeners. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much, Katie. It has just been a real pleasure talking with you. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Katie can do for you. I hope we can all manage our stress better um, because we all have it. We all have hard stuff that we're dealing with. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.